Welcome to the real world. Hey, hey, YouTube. This is Haha ha Dead, and uh, today I'm going to be doing a tutorial video on redstone. We're actually going to do picks and a uh, couple of builds. This has been requested by a couple of people on Xbox who have seen like my redstone combination lock that I have built. Which I'll be get doing that in a little bit, but I'm going to start off with a few neat things that you can do with redstone, or at least little tips on them. First of all, I'll be saying that uh, redstone connection can go 15 blocks of redstone connection to it. Just like this. and you can connect or uh, extend it with repeaters, but if you notice you go any farther, that repeater will no longer light up because it has reached the end of its connection. Another neat little thing, which this I don't even know if most people are aware of, is that oh, it's starting to little night time. Dang it! All right, is that if you have say red or a glowstone like this, I'm just gonna build it like this real quick, and then just punch out the holes right there. And you would have had connection just going straight up this. It would actually connect all the way to the top. So I'm just going to set power up there. And as you can see, redstone is being lit up here. And you can have connections going straight up that way. Or there's also two other methods you can use. One is upside down half slabs. Which I actually really like to use whenever building because it looks neat. By building with an upside down half slab, you can do the exact same thing with glowstone. Get a full speed, that way the speed is going to power all the way up. Oh, now we don't want to put a repeater there. And yeah, see, we have redstone power up here. And there's one third one, but this one is like, say, you want to have a, a timer, but you don't want to put, but you don't really have the room to put repeaters are in a line, you just want to have uh, the connection go straight up, you can do another method. You have the simple method of this, where you put a tor uh, redstone torch there, you can do that, and then you can use power or something to get that redstone torch there. Do about a, I think it's a tick per redstone torch, but there's an even simpler method which I use on my uh, personal map that I've been working on to duplicate enchanted items, is I will have right here set up where it's kind of like how I have the glow thing today, but it's made out of a solid block and I'm just going to build brick these blocks and the only reason I'm doing survival is just more of a last floor yeah and then you put some torches along this and now it's a well like this a lot simpler and more uh, sturdy for straight up and I'm just going to act like this. And you'll see it kind of went slower there. I think that's the same time as this four non tick repeater. I'm just going to check that real quick to make sure I'm not doing any false uh, things. Okay, yeah, it's just uh, no tick repeaters. Well, basically, so every four of them will be a full tick repeater, I believe, or it's three, one or the other. But yeah, so what I can definitely 100% say is that for every torch you have here, it's worth one repeater with zero ticks. Alright, and there was. Well, that's basically how you would get a. Let's some move like that, and there's another one that I, is in the game. Is say you want to have a. Uh, signal to still go in an area or something like that. Like lock in, kind of. Like have a connection lock in. You want to have a repeater getting signal. So I'm just going to put a torch here. And say you don't want this to turn off, you get another connection into that. And you'll see this little bar here. This will lock it in. That way, even if this turns off, that stays on. And it will power other stuff. Of course, the moment this gets removed, it unlocks. And also, I think, yeah, the same works right here. You can permanently lock that as in locked or not going to turn on. This can be handy for, like, doing certain days. Say you want to have 
have uh, push this button and it will unlock this room. If you haven't activated the other buttons, that will not work by pressing that last button there. Alright, uh, I'm just going to go into uh, creative mode here. This is going to be how to make a combination map. And I'm just going to clear out a bunch of this stuff. I'm going to build this in creative only because it's uh, a little bit easier. Alright, what you're going to need is redstone, redstone torches, and most likely you're going to need repeaters, depending on how big the combination lock's going to be. Sticky pistons. Well, actually, no, you don't need sticky pistons. It's just regular pistons. And your junk block, in my case, is going to be uh, cobblestone. And I'm going to be doing a iron door to be open. You can use pistons like I used on my test world for those few of you who have been on my uh, Xbox test world. But I'm just going to be using an iron door since it's a lot simpler. And I'm just going to go over here. That way, oh, yeah, you're also going to need a button. Unless you want to use levers for whatever reason. And what you're going to want to do is, first of all, you're going to want to make your little kind of numerical pad. In my case, it's going to be kind of like this. Oh, what I'm going to do, just because it's simpler to do whenever you're um, making your initial... Uh, I forgot what it's kind of called. Kind of your start for the project is I'm going to use blocks that are a different color to help coordinate where the buttons are for the signals. Now of course this is a little more compact right here. So basically that's how it's going to be. You're going to put your buttons there for your pad. In my case I usually do levels but I'm not going to on this. And then you build out your junk block or whatever you're going to use since this block has no real importance. I think that's a stupid little zombie that killed me in my uh, Iron Golem video, which, yeah, for those of you who told me, I already know it's misspelled. My bad. And what I'm going to do for this is, I'm going to, actually, I'm going to keep these three down here. I'm going to move this one out a little bit. That way it's two blocks. You don't have to, you, uh, kind of yanks on how far out these move. It's completely up to you. It depends on how neat you want your redstone to look. But I'm going to move these out a few blocks. That way it's not interrupting each other. I'm going to do the same for here, but I'm going to bring these up. That way we are, they are not interrupting each other. They're not getting in the redstone way. And not interfering with the rest of the connection. And of course this is going to vary depending on how many numbers you're going to have in your combination lock. And also uh, how compact you want it to be. Like if you want it to look really neat, you'll probably be doing something similar to this. But yeah. And then once you get to this stage, what you want or, ugh, what you're gonna want to do is connect redstone to this. Make sure it's within like by the time it reaches this block right here, you're gonna want it to have at least thirteen. If it's any more than thirteen, you're gonna want a repeater before it gets there. Because you're gonna need two more redstone connections or like two more redstone blocks redstone dust blocks to do what you're about to be doing here. Alright, now what you want to do is you're going to want to put two more junk blocks, but like this, or it can be vice versa, it doesn't matter which way you do it. And you're going to want to put two redstone torches underneath. And then you're going to want to put a random block right here. It could be on either side as well, vice versa. And then what you're going to want to do is get a piston over here. Make sure you have this block down before you put your second piston. If you don't do that, you will have to rebuild this whole entire little part right here. And then you're going to put your redstone right up here. And, of course, with these things. I can't remember if this works on 1.7.10. Yeah. Okay, it is not. That's my bad. Alright, basically what you're going to want to do, you're not going to be underwater for this most likely. What you're going to want to do is get a redstone torch under here. And I'm going to have to replace that piston, but oh well. Just 
just ignore what I had to go through there. Oh, and I'll be right back. My recording is about to reach 10 minutes. See you in a moment. Alright, and now that you're here, oh man, gotta put my cursor sticker back. You're gonna notice that there's a, well you can't really see it because I have cobblestone blocking it. But if you were to press this button right here, you notice that the piston has moved. And now the torch is visible. That is basically how your connection is going to work. You're going to have redstone on the up, or redstone on the other end. And you see how that redstone is not powered. Say I were to reactivate that button yet again. Now that redstone is being powered. That's basically what you're doing is you're causing a switch to happen. Uh, I kind of got this idea of the redstone contraption from Nims TV. I think he called it a key flip flop or something like that. Pretty neat design. And you, basically what you're going to do is you're going to set that up for all of these. The reason I had these go up even farther on each side is so that uh, the torches and all the redstone doesn't kind of conflict with each other. Now, now that I showed you guys how to build that one, I'm going to off camera build the other five just for my simple six combination lock. And I'll be right back. Alright, yes. So now I have built... All six of these up, as you can see, the power is being set to them, and they all look very identical. And now the next part we're going to be doing is say, uh, I'm just going to make a mock little wall here. Let's just pretend that this is a gigantic wall, and that the only way around is through this iron door. Then a lot of people will be wondering, well, how would you get into that iron door? Oh, yeah. I'm just going to go to this iron door I just lost. This is built on a poor foundation. Alright, there we go. Alright, basically what you want to have to do is you have two options really to activate this door. Both work. One, you would have the redstone torch connected to the block right underneath it. That way it will in shape or form like that. Or you can have, say, a redstone repeater that you would power to open the door. Okay, and now what you're going to want to have to do is you're going to want a block with a redstone torch on it, and in my case, I'm going to have, and I guess I'm going to go with the repeater one for this, just because of just really the location I'm in, and I'm going to have that connected to the door, and now the next part you're going to want is every single piston is going to be connecting to what I'm about to build right here, so you're going to want a repeater onto this block, or you can Vice versa with a torch underneath that block, however you prefer. I'll even show it just in case you don't know what I'm talking about. I'm going to make that a solid block. Say you to put a torch under there, it would do that. Just for anybody who didn't really know. And what you're going to have is, what I tend to do is kind of like a, oh, that was a little close there. I'm like, it's basically like this, just a line. And what you're going to have under this, or I mean on top of it, is redstone. And then what I'm going to have is a repeater into this. From this. I'm going to make sure that this is within 15. I'm just going to extend it two more to make sure I have room. And what you're going to want under every single one of these is, or not every, or every single one, for every uh, number you're going to have on your keypad, or numerical keypad, you're going to want a redstone torch. And since I have six, I'm going to have six redstone torches each. And I just noticed a flaw in this, but all I have to do is move my torches over one. And I'm just going to put six in here. This is going to sim or this is going to be very important because this is how your numerical keypad combination lock thing is going to work. And now for every single piston or I mean, yeah, thing, piston thing you have set up, you are going to have your redstone connection travel to the block that is next to it. Now you don't have to have that many repeaters. And I don't know why that thing keeps spawning. And now as you see, that turned off. And if I were to push this button, that torch is now back on. And just for the sake of this, I'm going to turn all of them on. You know what, I'm 
going to name these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. I mean, that makes sense, really, I guess. Damn, Pops, I want my jump block back. And this is just... Well, basically, this is how it usually look. This is just a very bland design I have right here. I'm going to name this 4, 1, counting it, haha, I'm dead, 2, 3, 5, and 6. So that's the new numerical keypad. So far, we have number 4 set up. And basically, I'm going to connect all of these right here. Of course, if you really want it to look new, you can have like the actual numbers set up to the first ones or whatever but that's only something you'd really see anyway so that's really just up to you if you want to implement that into it and I'm just gonna hook up one more of these just for the er yeah actually you no know, what I was gonna do is if you have something bigger which in my case, on my uh, adventure map, I have a 22 lock combination that I built, custom, all by myself, and I used a series of these that have mine look. If you want to have them bigger, you have multiple options. The first option is you have your typical line, and whenever uh, oh, I didn't mean to take the time there, whenever you run out of connection, like you have 15, just pretend that's 15. What you will do is you'll have a repeater, and you just continue on the redstone, and just make sure you don't have a connection underneath that repeater. That's all you have to do. Or you have an option of what I did, is I had two layers of, I'm just going to remove this right here, so we have a little bit of room. Is what I had was, this is the center point I guess you could say. I had a row of 15 here. And add a row of 15 here, and add a row of 15 here, and I had multiple connections all along this. I think I had like 11 along all this, and then it went over into uh, the main door where it would activate a special surprise. See right there, and also a few blocks higher, I had the exact same thing set up. My other 11 connections along here. This is just a uh, mock of it but I had the exact same thing set up up top a good bit higher and then I had it also looped down into this that way both the connections were dependent and needed for the system work so if you only activated one row you wouldn't be able to get in or like the surprise you would need to activate both rows and this would basically account for however long you can add as many layers as you want depending on how complex your uh, keypad is going to be I'm just gonna switch this. Oh, it is on booster. Okay. And I'm gonna be right back. I'm going to set up all of these little torches for the keypad, and I'll be right back. Alright, and I'm back. I have built all the connections. Of course, depending on how you built yours and where you're building it and everything, it's gonna look a little bit different. Mine, I. Just kind of like simple loop overs and all that, but as you can see, they are all connected to their own separate torch. And I'm gonna press th it. This one, it doesn't really matter the order you press them in, as long as you press in the right numbers. And I don't even know if I pressed it. Or I have a feeling I did. Yeah, I didn't press it. And then magically. Oh, I did not press one of them. Apparently. Oh. I did press it. This is an issue. I had forgotten to put something. Now look. The doors might actually be open. But those of you that would be confused on how to actually set up a combination, what you would say is uh, I'm just going to do even numbers. You have to put in two for to get into this. Now you see it's locked. If you put in any other numbers, like say if I were to go, okay, it's pressing one. Nothing's gonna change except for a sound. Put in two. That's the mouse is messing up. Four, six. The magical door opens. All right, now this is a simple one. The only reason I'm calling it simple is because you can press in any common or order of the numbers, but the only thing is it doesn't really matter the order, but it is still open as long as you press the right numbers. 
All right, guys, sorry about that. Something happened with the uh, recording time. All right, now, uh, if you guys would like to see another Redstone tutorial or anything like that, just let me know in the comments down below or contact me on Xbox 360 or Xbox Live, I mean. Uh, don't know really what else. Uh, yeah, if you guys would like to see me build uh, or like try to figure out how to make a more complex version, as in you have to press the combination in the exact right order, otherwise it won't work. Let me know, and uh, I guess I can start working on that in a redstone uh, test world or something. Alright, I guess that's the end of the video. Like, leave a comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Alright, see you guys later. Peace.